For this particular part of the video, what we're going to be looking at is we are going to be comparing the structure of the sensory neuron and motor neuron. In the previous video, I told you that you must be able to recognize how the sensory neuron, relay neuron, and motor neuron look like. Right? You must know their function as well, by the way. And you must also know that the central nervous system uh, is consisting of the brain and spinal cord, which I've highlighted in that very... Uh, mild green color, all right? And the relay neuron, I've also mentioned it in the previous video, that they are located fully inside the central nervous system. Video is not technically about the relay neuron. What we do have to also understand is, some parts of the sensory neuron is also located it, they are partially within the central nervous system and the motor neuron is also partially within the central nervous system as I'm circling in red. You can see portions of these two neurons that are embedded within the CNS, the brain or the spinal cord. But I'm going to remove the relay neuron because we don't really have to focus on it. What we do have to know is we have to focus on the structure of the sensory neuron and motor neurons. That is important for the exam. Now, the first thing we want to do is look at the parts where I'm highlighting in yellow. Those parts where I'm highlighting in yellow for the sensory and motor neurons, they are referred to as the cell body. The cell bodies are just these particular parts of the cell where the nucleus is found. Okay, so you can see the nucleus within the cell as well. The weird thing over here that you must know within the difference between sensory neuron and motor neuron is as follows. The cell body of the sensory neuron are not within the CNS. You know, it's not within that green color border of the brain and spinal cord. But for the motor neuron, however, the cell body is within the central nervous system. You must know the difference between the two of them. Okay, that's the first difference that we notice. Okay, they have some similarities, but they have differences too. The second part is the elongated structure, which I'm highlighting in blue. That is referred to as something called axons. Axons are just these long structures. And by the way, even though these are individual cells, some axons can go up to a meter long. Yes, one single, a single neuron can sometimes be up to a meter long because the reason why axons have to be long is because they have to transmit impulses over long distance. Then, so those are similarities between the sensory and motor neuron. They both have axons. Another similarity is they also have these parts where I'm highlighting in orange. You can see that. Those are referred to as dendrites. They look like roots, don't they? And the function of the dendrites are to just increase the surface area when receiving signals. That's all we just have to know about it. So the more branching you can see in the dendrites, just like the roots of the plants, it increases the surface area, not to absorb water and minerals, by the way. These are not roots, even though they look like roots. They are to increase the surface area so they can easily get signals or electrical impulses from other structures as easily as possible. Okay, and then we also have the parts where I'm highlighting in uh, grey. Those are referred to as terminal branches or the end branches. And the terminal branches have this kind of like ball or grape-like structures. And those grape-like structures are referred to as the synaptic knob. Okay, and the synaptic knob will contain vesicles with neurotransmitters. Okay, we will talk about the synaptic knob in a much later video. What we are just doing over here is we are just comparing the structure of the sensory and motor neuron, in which both have cell bodies, both have axons, both have dendrites, and both also have terminal branches and synaptic knob. The only difference over here is the structure of the cell bodies. Uh, for the motor neuron, the cell body is located at the beginning part of the neuron. But the cell body of the sensory neuron is located in the middle, somewhat in the middle. And then uh, you can also say that for the motor neuron, the cell body is within the central nervous system, but for the sensory neuron, it is not. So these are some of the similarities we must know and the differences as well. Now, another thing that I also want you to understand here is as follows. I'm drawing out the sensory neuron and motor neuron, as you can see there, and you can see the axon. But on the right side, the axon has this kind of weird, um, I don't know how to describe it, like cake, <laughs> not cake, uh, sponge, kind of like orange color sponges, uh, intermittently found along the axon, that weird, that weird peach highlights that I've put over there. So what exactly are those? Now, those are referred to as something called as the myelin sheath. Now, some students will ask the question, do all axons need to have the myelin sheath? 
Not necessarily. Some neurons do not have myelin, they do not have the myelin sheath, so we refer to them as unmyelinated axon. But if the neuron has something called a myelin sheath or myelin layer, we will refer to it as something called the myelinated axon. Now, upon closer inspection of the uh, axon over here, we notice that, um, oh, by the way, what neuron is this? You must be able to recognize this. This is a motor neuron right here. How do we know that's a motor neuron? Because we can see the cell body. It's forming that kind of head at the end of it, right? Now, um, this motor neuron has myelin sheath. And upon closer inspection of the myelin sheath, we notice that the myelin sheath does not cover the entirety of the axon. They are kind of like uh, a little bit gap, a little bit and then a gap, a little bit and then a gap. So wherever that you have the orange color or peach color layer, that's known as the myelin layer or the myelin sheath. But the parts of the axon that do not have the myelin sheath are referred to as something called the nodes of Ranvier. So, Ran, if I'm not mistaken, I think the person the person who discovered this was called Ranvier. I might be wrong here, but yeah, we are not going to go through that in detail. But um, the point of the matter is, parts of the axon that are not myelinated are referred to as the nodes of Ranvier. Is this important? Yes. Am I going to talk about it now? No. Okay, because we will talk about it later. But one important question I love asking my students is as follows. Is the myelin sheath actually going through the axon? Is it piercing through the axon? How does it actually look like, right? So upon closer inspection, this is just the longitudinal view of the myelin sheath. You can see the myelin sheath. It kind of looks like it's going through the axon, isn't it? But when you look at a diagonal view or the three-dimensional version over here, purple color is the axon. Is the myelin actually going through the axon? No, it's not. The myelin is actually like a cinnamon roll. <laughs> I'm a bit hungry. Okay, don't mind me. Um, the myelin sheath is actually twirling around the axon. It's spiraling around the axon. The axon is kind of like a tube, right? And the myelin is actually going around it, okay? Swirling around it instead of going through it, okay? It's not piercing through the axon at all. And if we were to look at the cross section, I'm, I'm coloring the axon in purple so you can see it more clearly. If we were to look at the cross section, you can see the axon. And the myelin is actually like a kind of a snake, if you will. And the snake is just going around and enveloping the axon. That is referred to as the myelin sheath. And here's the interesting thing. The myelin sheath is actually a separate type of cell. It's a particular type of cell that is wrapping around the axon to form the myelin sheath. And the name of that cell is called the Schwann cell. Okay, so now students will then get very confused. They'll, they'll be like, okay, let's say they, they have an arrow pointing towards the myelin sheath. Do I call it the Schwann cell or do I call it the myelin sheath in the exam? You can call it both if you wanted to. Normally in the exam, if they just point towards the layer, as that arrow is doing right now, and if they ask you to name that thing, you can just name it as the myelin sheath or the Schwann cell. But if they were to specifically ask you a question, what is the name of the cell that makes up the myelin sheath, then you have to say it's the Schwann cell. That's basically what we have to know for this, all right? And of course, what are the parts? Think, remember again, the parts of the axon, not all parts of the axon have the myelin sheath, by the way. The parts of the axon that do not have the myelin, those sp small little portions, they are known as the nodes of Ranvier. Okay, and I'm just labeling the nodes of Ranvier for your reference over here as well. All right. Now, what is the function of the myelin sheath? Some of you might know that the function of the myelin sheath is to speed up the transmission of the impulse. I'm not going to talk about it now because we first have to talk about electrical impulse in detail. Then we will come back to the myelin sheath. This particular video is just looking at these structures. Okay. So this is just the introduction to what the myelin sheath on the axon is all about.